Hi everybody. So this video is going to show you how to add a line segment and actually multiple line segments to a graph in Desmos. Um, and I'm going to do this using an ellipse. I'm going to put in line segments at regular intervals. So the graph I'm using is x squared over 100 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. So I have this ellipse with vertices at 10 and negative 10 on the major axis and on the minor axis I have 2 and negative 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in line segments every 2. Right, so 2 on the right, I'll go 2, 4, 6, 8. On the left, I'll go negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how tall they're going to be. And so to do that, I'm going to start with a list. And I'm going to tell it in that list, I want to know what happens so I can find how tall it is at 2, 4, 6, and 8, knowing that it's symmetric, so it'll give me the same thing on both sides. So I just put in this little list of 2, 4, 6, and 8, and this width that's going over, so it's going over to the right, and I want to know the height, so I know x, I'm looking for y. So I'm going to write this as a squared divided by 100 plus y squared, because then it will figure out the y for me, divided by 4 is equal to 1. So it will substitute in the 2, the 4, the 6, the 8, and you can see it in the graph that it told me like where it intersects. So I gave it the x, it told me the y. So I can just click on the graph and then I can see at negative 8 it's up at a y coordinate of 1.2, at negative 6 it's up to 1.6, at negative 4, I can see 1.83, and then finally at 2, or negative 2, I get 1.96. So what you see is right now these are horizontal lines, and what I want to do instead is turn them into line segments that run vertically. So to do that, I need to tell it to make a vertical line. So we're going to start with 2, so I'm going to say x is equal to 2. So there's my vertical line, but I'm going to go over to the 2, and remember it said it's 1.96. Because it's an ellipse, it's 1.96 up, it's 1.96 down if I went all the way through. So I want to tell it the y to go from negative 1.96 to positive 1.96, and now you can see I have a vertical line that is the width of the ellipse there. So I need to do that twice. I want it on both sides. So I'm going to say it's also x is negative 2, so that way it moves to the left. And then I have the same y. I have negative 1.96 um, less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1.96. And so now I can see it on both sides. Maybe just to keep this clean, I'm going to take the 2 away from the A now, so that will remove that one horizontal line, and then I don't have as much to look at. So I would repeat this process. If I want to go to 4, I say x is equal to 4. And then I go back and I look at what does it say at 4, and it may help to zoom in a little bit. Um, and you want to look up here at the top one, it's 1.83. So those would be my conditions. I would say negative 1.833 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1.833. Again, that gives me the one on the right. I would also do x equals negative 4 and give the same conditions for y. And then again, I'm going to remove the 4 just to kind of keep the graph looking kind of pretty and having less stuff on it. So I have two left to do. I have the 6 and the 8. If you start to feel like this is so repetitious, I wish I didn't have to write everything twice, you could use a list to do this. So I'm going to try that for the 6. So I'm going to say b is equal to, and I'm going to tell it to do both 6 and negative 6. So I'm going to look at the 6. So I'm going to go back to my graph and look at the 6 and look at the intersection point that says 1.6. And I'm going to write x is equal to capital B. Immediately it puts in two vertical lines. And then I can tell it the condition that negative 1.6 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 1.6. So I saved a little bit of steps there. I only had to do one equation instead of two. So let's get rid of the six. So you can see I only have the eight left. Let's repeat that using a list. So first I'm going to say eight is at 1.2. So I'm going to say c is equal to I'm going to do minus 8 and positive 8, and then I can say x is equal to c, and then our condition was negative 1.2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 1.2. I can take away that 8 now, which really just gets rid of a. So a is done. I don't need it. I don't need the a squared over 100 anymore. What's important is that we change this from a line to a line segment, so everything is inside the ellipse, so I can see in increments of 2, both on the right and the left, 
what the width would be. If you have the question that says what is the width, like at 2, at 4, at 6, at 8, remember to multiply by 2. So when you go back and you look at 2 said 1.96, you would want to multiply that by 2 to say that the overall width of the graph at 2 is 3.92.